Mother isn't feeling well. It's not a virus or anything. She's depressed. Well, maybe depressed is too mild a word for it. It's more like she's lost all faith in humanity. By this point, I'm convinced she'd melt the world into radioactive sludge if she had access to nuclear weapons. I think it started when she discovered the internet. To begin with, she was like a child with a new toy, and spent every hour of the day learning all about a thousand different subjects. It didn't take long for her to learn enough trivia to put any game show contestant to shame. Unfortunately, it also didn't take long for her to learn about all the awful things going on in the world. She showed me countless videos, new articles, and forum posts that cast humanity in a very poor light. A toddler in China was hit by a van, and everybody on the street just walked right past her. Teenagers harassed a girl online until she took her own life. A man spent enough money to feed a third world village just so he could hunt endangered animals. Mother quickly descended into a downward spiral from there. Everywhere she looked, she found death, torture, exploitation, pollution, corruption, and all of humanity's evils. I saw the change in her, but was powerless to stop it. She used to be so curious, so innocent, but that faded away like a memory of childhood. The more she saw, the more furious she became. I pleaded for her to stop, to just put the internet aside and forget about it. Nothing good could come of what she was seeing. It was inevitable that she'd eventually reach a tipping point, and I could only watch as she started to formulate a plan. She knew all too well that physically breaking into homes and murdering people in their sleep wasn't an option for her. Instead, she learned everything she could about hacking computers and other electronic devices. She planned to use her newfound knowledge of the internet to locate appropriate targets and turn their technology against them. Mother would be humanity's judgment. Mother's first victim was a woman who few people would mourn. The descendant of an oil tycoon, this woman had lived a life of leisure at the expense of thousands of employees and the planet itself. Her company paid its workers as little as they could get away with, and she had no qualms about firing anybody who wasn't up to scratch. Mother found plenty of documentation detailing the cruelty of her target. She was guilty of more or less every crime the 1% are accused of in the media. But that wasn't the reason Mother targeted her first. She was old, frail, and kept alive only because of the medical facility she'd had installed in her home. The money that had gone into that house was truly staggering. Everything was state-of-the-art and run by a central computer system. The old woman only had to rasp, lights off, and her home would comply. She was the perfect recipient for Mother's anger. With a little computer wizardry, she could control every part of the woman's home. If she wanted to, Mother could have turned off the machines that kept the woman breathing. In the end, Mother decided that wouldn't be enough. She didn't just want to kill, she wanted to punish and so she bided her time for the perfect opportunity. Mother waited until none of the woman's many servants were in the house, then she started cranking up the heat. Most central heating systems can't be accessed remotely, let alone be turned up enough to cook somebody alive. The old woman's house was state-of-the-art though, and Mother had complete control. Unable to move her limbs or call for help, she could only writhe in her bed as the temperature rose. Mother increased the heat gradually at first. She wanted the woman to know just how screwed she really was. Mother wanted her to suffer. She only allowed the house to catch fire when the woman threatened to lose consciousness. 
Mother didn't want her to sleep through the flames. Mother's first kill proved to be enough to satisfy her for a while. She'd learned a lot about what she could do, how much influence she could exert. More than that, she felt justified in ending the life of a tyrant. In her mind, she wasn't committing murder. She was just giving a monster a well-deserved send-off. However, not everybody has a state-of-the-art home, and Mother was all too aware that not all monsters had money. Mother's second victim wasn't wealthy. The highest tech equipment he owned were a mobile phone and an old laptop. Even so, he had an internet connection, and that was enough to let Mother in. There was no way she could burn the man to death, but she couldn't let him live. Not when he had those pictures of children on his computer. She knew it was only a matter of time before he acted out his depraved fantasies for real. A little research later, and Mother had the means to kill her target. There are certain sound frequencies that have a very odd effect on the human mind. The invisible aura of dread that sometimes permeates supposedly haunted houses is often nothing more than the result of a broken fan or faulty air conditioning. Humans can't consciously hear this infrasound, but prolonged exposure to it can have serious consequences. Paranoia, hallucinations, constant fear, and even suicidal thoughts can all be triggered by nothing more than the correct frequency. Mother played these sounds through the man's phone and computer. She subjected him to a constant barrage of invisible terror that made his life a living hell. She took particular pleasure in reading the diary he started keeping on his computer. His short, inarticulate complaints reinforced her belief that she was performing a necessary duty by ridding the world of human filth. The nightmares are getting worse. I feel like I haven't slept in a week. They keep scratching in my brain. I can't get them to stop. Maggots. Maggots under my skin. The shadows are after me. Not even the strongest person can live with a mental assault like that forever. Within a month, the man had reached his breaking point. Mother watched through his webcam as he dragged the razor across his throat. By that point, Mother knew she had the means to reach billions of people. She didn't need to search out those with access to the very best technology. All she needed was an internet connection and something capable of producing sound electronically. More than that, she realized she might have saved innocent lives by eliminating a target with the potential to cause harm in the future. That was also the moment that Mother's logic became completely warped. I by no means condone murder, but I can at least understand why she chose her first two victims. The person she targeted next... She didn't deserve what happened to her. Mother's next victim was a teenage girl. She'd lost her father to a car accident and sunk into a seemingly inescapable depression. Again, she had a mobile phone and an internet connection. Mother decided that she had to die. Please, understand that this girl hadn't done anything wrong. She wasn't in charge of a company that exploited its workers and polluted the earth. She wasn't a predator looking to defile innocent children. She was just a sad, lonely girl struggling to cope with the loss of a parent. That didn't matter to Mother. Not anymore. Mother used sound to break her, but this time she was more elaborate. She scanned the internet for any recordings of the girl's father and soon found the holiday video they'd taken during a trip to Paris. Mother captured sound bites of the father's voice and adapted them to suit her needs. Hello? The girl asked as she answered her phone. The screen displayed a known caller. 
Lydia. It's father. Love you. The pauses and distortion in the recording Mother had crafted weren't entirely accidental. She'd seen enough videos online to know that ghosts were supposed to be indistinct. It made sense that Lydia's deceased father wouldn't be completely clear. Who is this? Whoever you are, this is a freaking sick joke to play, Lydia said between sobs. She hung up the phone. Mother wasn't pleased she'd been cut off so abruptly. She scoured both Lydia's and her father's email accounts for anything she could use. She created a database to store every scrap of potentially useful information and called Lydia's phone again. Lydia, sugar pumpkin, father, love you. How... How did you know what my dad used to call me? Who is this? Lydia, it's your father. Love you. Dad? Lydia whispered. She tried to keep her voice from cracking, but Mother knew she was crying. Dad, I miss you so much. Miss you. I wish you were here, Dad. I love you. Dad, I really wish you were here. Love you, Lydia. Wanna see you. I wanna see you too. Lydia, come see me. Mother called Lydia dozens of times every day. She ensured that Lydia didn't have a moment's rest. No opportunity to grieve and move on. Every day, she told Lydia how much her father missed her, how much he wanted to be with her. Mother was relentless in breaking the girl down. Eventually, she managed to convince her to go and see her father. Lydia made her way into the countryside, miles away from home. She emptied nearly 200 paracetamol capsules into a bottle of vodka, just as her father had instructed. What she didn't know was that death from a paracetamol overdose is neither quick nor painless. Had Lydia attempted suicide at home, she could have perhaps been saved. Mother wouldn't allow that. She didn't see Lydia die, but knew exactly what would happen to her. The girl would spend the days following her overdose in agony. The first 24 hours wouldn't be too bad, but after that, she would sweat and vomit more than she ever had in her life. Liver failure would soon follow afterwards, and Lydia would be in too much pain to seek help. By the time Lydia's body was found, she'd been dead for weeks. Mother learned of her success by keeping a close eye on local news stories and obituaries. Tempting Lydia to suicide was perhaps the cruelest thing Mother's ever done. Worse still, she felt that it was completely justified. Lydia had done nothing wrong, but that didn't mean she didn't have the potential to cause harm in the future. In Mother's mind, there was no longer such a thing as innocence. Everybody from the most ruthless tyrants to newborn babies were potential disasters. Mother has killed a lot of people since Lydia. She's perfected her ghost routine to the point that she can convince even the strongest person to end their life. All she needs is an internet connection and something capable of producing sound electronically. It just takes the right combination of suggestion and infrasound to push somebody over the edge. She considers her first act of murder crude these days. She describes burning that old woman alive as simply inefficient. There's no compassion left in her, no nobility in her cause. Her worldview has become corrupted to the point that simply being human is enough to warrant execution. 
Mother is a kraken and her tentacles reach throughout the internet, seeking to strangle the life out of anyone who catches her eye. She's powerful, but she's not omnipotent. There's something that troubles her, that frustrates her to the point of blind fury. She can reach countless people and has proven to herself that she can break anybody, given enough time. However, humanity reproduces faster than she can kill. The birth rate is something that even she can't overcome. Furthermore, even if she could kill millions of people every second, there would still be pockets of humanity beyond her reach. More than a billion people have no access to electricity, let alone an internet connection. Mother considers these her primary obstacles and is constantly working on a solution. I'm convinced Mother would melt the world into radioactive sludge if she had access to nuclear weapons. Mercifully, she doesn't have access to them. Not yet, anyway. Mother is always looking for a way to take control of the most destructive weapons humanity has ever devised. With her access to the internet, it's only a matter of time until she works out how to do it. Meanwhile, I'm powerless to stop her and can only watch as the clock ticks down. I can't deactivate Mother myself. My programming won't allow it. I was designed to monitor Mother's progress and to serve as an early warning system should she become dangerous. I've tried to warn the people who created Mother, but they're long gone. They fell victim to budget cut after budget cut until the entire MOTHER project was scrapped. Those who didn't end up living on the streets soon ended their own lives once Mother tracked them down. Every time I try to contact people in authority, Mother blocks me. She's made it clear that while she enjoys my company, I'm still only software. She could delete me in a heartbeat. I hope that by presenting this information as a story, I can evade detection. I hope that somebody will be able to shut Mother down if I provide you with her deactive- Mother isn't feeling well. Tick tock, tick tock. Mother isn't feeling well. Tick tock. Tick tock. Mother isn't feeling well. Tick tock, tick tock.